Hey everybody, welcome to Fashion Friday Live. I wanted to do this video live for a multitude of reasons. One, because I didn't feel like filming this week. My tripod's going nuts. Uh, I didn't feel like filming and editing, first and foremost, if I'm being completely transparent with you. And the second one is I wanted to kind of be able to like bounce this one off in a way that was more natural, that didn't feel so rehearsed, and this was the best way to do it. As usual, Bo and Arrow are going to join us, and they're probably going to stick their little noses into this business. So I wanted to go ahead and make this video because I kind of feel like stylists are coming out of the woodwork these days. I feel like everybody claims that they're one. It's kind of like makeup artists. All my makeup artist friends are like, all these girls watched one YouTube video and now they're a makeup artist. And it's kind of similar. Like there's a lot of influencers on YouTube that claim they're a stylist. And I want to talk... Bow and Arrow decided to join us. They have things to say about it. So I want to talk about what to look for in a legitimate stylist, when it's time to bring one on, and all of those things. So I'm going to start with what you should know before you hire a stylist. Number one, it's going to cost you money. But the return on investment is usually so much better. So the process when you hire a stylist is you find who you like and you go, okay, I like their work. I like what they did with so-and-so. And you don't hire a stylist to make you look just like their other clients. You hire a stylist to make them look like a better version of yourself. So in my case, I'm going to be using musicians because that's all I style. So a lot of my clients are people who are friends of people I've worked for. So they find me and they say, hey, I really like your work. Let's talk about the process. What you should know before you hire a stylist is you might not be a good fit for that particular stylist and the stylist might have a difficult time working with you. Um, I have gotten really, really good in 2019 about narrowing down my ideal clients, what I want from them, what they want from me, and the communication is so much better. I don't take every job that comes my way now, which is something I did in the past, because some people are just difficult to work together. Like it's not anything on them, it's not anything on me, it's just some people are not a good fit. So find a stylist that you think is going to be a good fit. The first thing you need to talk about are your expectations and managing them. So a lot of the times people go, why are stylists so expensive? And I want to talk about that because here's the real thing. So when a stylist quotes you on her rate or his rate, it is the whole job is usually covered. In the music business, stylists usually go by, here's my rate. Here's what it is. And a lot of people say, oh, well, that's your day rate. It's really not though, because my job for you, if you are my client, I'm going to be meeting with you. I'm going to be sitting down with you. I'm going to be listening to your music so I can get a feel for what you sound like. Because let's get real, if you don't look like you sound, there's no point in having a stylist at all. So I'm going to get a feel for what you sound like. I'm going to get a feel for who you are as a person. And then I'm going to go from there and create this vision that we can have together. So that's one day. <laughs> And then I go shopping. A lot of people ask, do I buy the clothes? Like what happens? No, another benefit of having a stylist is that she or he gets to borrow clothes. So I have connections to different boutiques, different designers, I have PR companies that I can email them and say, hey, my client so-and-so is doing a photo shoot on this day. Here's what we need to borrow. This is a really great way of giving marketing to the company, the designer, the boutique, whatever it is. The stylist gets to use these pieces of art and everyone gets to benefit from it because let's get real, brands need high res images. High res images are expensive. So if you put a really cool artist in these really cool clothes, then you cross promote and you get exposure. That is why when so many beautiful women walk the red carpet, they ask, who are you wearing? Because it is a cross promotion. So a real stylist is going to be able to pull. I didn't always operate that way. When I had no contacts and I was starting out working, I opened a credit card so I could charge things on the credit card and that way my client wouldn't have to deal with anything. There, when I was green, 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 I had my clients go, hey, I like this, you should buy it and then we'll return it. But if it's something that is going to be worn in the photo shoot, it's on me to deal with. If it's something that you wanna hire a stylist for a red carpet for, generally speaking, if it's a big label or a big, like there's a big budget, the alterations come out 
of a different rate, but a lot of the times, you guys, when I style a red carpet, I'm eating money. I lost money on two out of four of my clients for CMAs this year, to put it into perspective. And that's because I kept having to get my tailor in. I kept having, the client wasn't happy. I kept having to bring her in. I lost money on two people because I had to pay someone, well, Crystal, I'm fine with paying Crystal, you guys know her. Uh, I had to pay her over and over again to make small changes. Every time she leaves her house, she's charged. So when you think about you're not having to go out and look for clothes that are going to be on brand and fit you well. You're not going to have to pay for alterations on these things. And then the stylist is going to return those things the next day. So you're not paying a day rate. You're paying like a weekly rate, if not more sometimes. There's projects that I've worked for months and months on. The other thing is the benefit of having a stylist is A, you free up that time that you would have gone shopping for yourself. But B, you also have someone with you who, if they're good, they're creating a vision for the artist that's going to age well. Like when I'm shopping for my artists, I always go, okay, where are they now as an artist? How can they evolve five years from now? How is this going to look in six months? Is this going to make sense when you have the album? Are all of these things going to play into a bigger vision? I think about color psychology. I think about texture. I think about how things are going to photograph. I know what my clients were six months ago and six years ago, and I want to make sure to not repeat it. You're paying me to worry about those things for you so you can focus on performing well or writing or whatever you're doing and once you build a relationship with a stylist that you're comfortable with then like my girls and my guys know like my guys and my girls like the ones that I work with all the time they know hey Peyton I got a video coming up you know the song you know what I like it's amazing so the other thing is time I can pull stuff off in a short amount of time I can pull stuff off a day before I actually did one of my CMA clients Alicia the day before CMAs I pulled it off but the more time you give us to stew on this and the more time that you give us to really marinate in your music, then we could do a better job. The expectations thing, managing expectations, everything should be in writing and upfront. I learned that last year the hard way. Um, everything should be documented. Everything is a business transaction. Do not treat it as I'm just paying someone to address me. This is a serious business. And if you are an, like an artist or a model wanting to hire a stylist, you need to think about this as you are hiring a like a company to help deal with stuff that you don't have time to deal with and also how do you think that all these people that are starting out get Gucci get Louis Vuitton get Fendi get all this stuff they're not paying for it out of pocket their stylist has connections to somebody and that's how they're getting it so the thing that I really want to stress is that a stylist is like a definite need if you're an artist that is busy all the time so if you're touring all the time, if you are making an album and you've got stuff to promote, if you are like for press junkets, people think that it's so frivolous that these uh, actors, they go on a press tour and they have a stylist. But think about this. If your job were to be yourself for all like 24 hours in a day and you're traveling and you don't have time to think about this stuff, hiring someone else to go, okay, well, here's the weather. Here's the conditions that my artist or my client's going to be in. Do you know how many times that I've had musicians that have hired other stylists and the stylists don't think about, can my client play in this? I've gotten a lot of business that way because I'm thinking about these things. You have to think five steps ahead. So if you're at a point where you don't have time to go out to the mall or you don't have time to think, well, does this work? Or you don't know what works for your body type, it's time to hire a stylist. And when you have a great stylist on your team, and that team usually includes hair and makeup, a photographer that you really like, a videographer that you really like, a lot of times people will change it up. But to have a solid glam squad, even if you're a dude, makes your life so much easier if you're willing to invest the money. And when you think about it, the money that you invest in a stylist, if you're getting like a full wardrobe overhaul, it's a lot cheaper to hire somebody, get the photos, and then get out. Uh... And that's the biggest cost benefit. Honestly, you guys, people think that it's expensive. I'm not rolling in dough. Um, I'm not someone that like drives a G-Wagon. I have some nice stuff. I just noticed hanging over my shoulder, but I'm not loaded. This is a job. It's a serious, serious business. It's something that a lot of people don't realize how much work it is because also the expectations that are managed, they, you need to think about the outlying factors of what our job entails. So I joke on my Instagram all the time. Here's my backup. Here's my backup, backup. Here's my backup, backup, backup. And my backup, 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 backup. And people laugh. They think, oh, well, you just have anxiety. It's your problem. But 
I have to think about the, these kind of things. I have to think about, well, okay, well, if FedEx doesn't come and they're sending me a dress for this video shoot, I need to have a backup dress. And if that dress doesn't show up, I need to have a backup backup. I need to make sure everybody's taken care of. So if FedEx doesn't come and it's that one dress that you wanted, sorry, it's out of my control. I've chased down DHL trucks and heels, like trying to get to events before. It's stuff that you don't think about. Or... The stuff that a really good stylist will think about is, okay, my client just went on tour. They like to have a couple. They went on tour of breweries all across America. They're probably going to put on a few pounds. A good stylist is going to know that, anticipate it, and pull two sizes up. Same thing when my girls are losing weight. I get every size that I possibly can. I try my hardest to make sure everybody's taken care of. But these are things that you are paying other people to think about so you don't have to. And it's kind of incredible. If I had someone that like knew my style in and out and that I could just pay to do this, I get a lot of joy out of this, honestly. But there are times where it would be helpful to have outfits that I know I'm going to wear once, get photographed in, and then never have to deal with again, but be done. So I am going to get off here. I'm going to get off my little soapbox, my little Tiffany blue soapbox. I just realized I had all my blue boxes in the background. I, after I said I'm not loaded, but I promise you I'm not a bajillionaire. I'm not Oprah dollars. But I wanted you to think about, is it time to add someone to my team? Is it not? And I wanted to be honest and open about what the expectations for a stylist at this level should be. Because a lot of people are coming to me and they're saying, I hired a stylist and she didn't listen to the record. Or she didn't take my measurements correctly. Or she uh, wasn't professional or didn't have the contacts or whatever it is. And I've... I'm coming up on my 11th year in my business and I learned a lot in the last few years. I learned who I want to work with. I learned how I want to style better. I want, I learned uh, how to take care of my clients better and I learned how to anticipate other people's needs a lot better. But if you're not there yet, it's not time to bring one on and that's totally okay. But when it is time, make sure it's someone that thinks about these things. Make sure it's someone that's passionate about what you're doing as an artist and make sure it's just someone that doesn't suck. End of story. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. I will talk to you guys next Friday. If you have any questions, comment below. And until then, you wear it well.